Assalamualaikum and welcome to the Hard One Islamic Study Circle, Hisk Sira session 144. Uh, I think this is the sixth session we're doing on the Azwa Hudaybiya or the Treaty of Hudaybiya Salal Hudaybiya, and uh, we're uh, carrying on from um, the uh, the fact that the Prophet he had taken a pledge of war of fighting from the Sahabi known as the Bayt al Ridwan. Um, because there was rumor spreading that uh, Uthman ibn Affan had been killed. Uh, so the Muslims are preparing for war. Uh, the Quraysh, they freak out, obviously, uh, and they uh, want to prevent war, they want to prevent fighting, and, 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 and also they want to prevent the Muslims from doing Ummah that year because of the humiliation it would cause them, their reputation, their status. Uh, so they, they, they uh, dispatch. Uh, someone called Mikras to sort of stall the Prophet uh, for a bit and, and, and just sort of uh, make sure that they don't make full preparations for war and, and in the meantime they're finding out or, or they're deciding on a, a proper strategy of what to do and how how to to go about this situation so then they uh, agree on sending one of their eldest uh, senior most statesmen you know uh, not Abu Sufyan uh, maybe you know, uh, on a par with Abu Sufyan, or sort of, you know, uh, uh, sort of um, uh, next in line almost, uh, someone called Sahel ibn Amr. Uh, and uh, Sahel, he, uh, the word Sahel comes from the Arabic root meaning um, to make things easy. So when the Prophet he sees Sahel approaching him in, with his entourage, he uh, turns around to the Sahabi and says, look, Allah has made it easy for you. This is a good omen. You know, this is a positive thing that they're sending someone like Sahel, who is known as a, a master orator, as a propagandist, as a sharp-minded politician. You know, uh, so, uh, so, so he, uh, he approaches. Uh, and uh, uh, again, at the, at the end of the last session, we talked about how the Prophet he says, look, there are... We shouldn't believe in uh, bad omens or, or, or uh, superstitions because Islam came to destroy those things. But, you know, because they're, they're a type of, of, of shirk and, and, and they can destroy people, um, you know, uh, and the negativity that's associated with those things. Uh, but the Prophet is a firm believer in a positive outlook, a positive, positive optimism and, and, and always thinking the best of, uh, of Allah. So you look at the situation around you and you think positive about it because that positivity generates uh, positivity and it generates, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, 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 good things and blessings and, 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 and you then feel that Allah is helping you and supporting you and that, that in itself, you know, putting, you know, uh, your trust in Allah. The Prophet says, look, you 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 know um, uh, you know a, a good word or a good phrase that someone hears. You should think you know think of it as, as, as positive. So long as a you know uh, the, the that uh, thing that you ascribe doesn't uh, you you ascribe it positively to Allah, uh, and and it's a it's a positive sign. You know it's 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 a, a, a you know uh, it's not you know somebody uh, somebody dying or it's not something haram that's happened. You know, it's you know, it's an allowable positive uh, sign or a message, and you link that uh, to Allah. So, good to be positive. So, Hail is coming. Uh, they've had this arm pass. They've they've been travelling. Uh, they've uh, uh, been camped outside uh, Makkah. There's a lot of tension in the air, and uh, the, the 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 Quraysh have sent so Hail Amr, and this is outside the process of control. So this is the Qadr of Allah. So the Prophet is thinking good of that. Well, Allah has made things easy uh, for you, and He's turning around, He's announcing that to uh, to the Sahabi. And again, right at the outset, the Prophet had 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 announced uh, when they camped that whatever condition they come up with, He will agree to, so long as it. Uh, protects the honor of Islam and doesn't go against, uh, you know, uh, Islam uh, or you know, uh, in, in that sense. So uh, he's already sort of psychologically prepared. 
the uh, the, uh, the the Muslims that you know we, we will negotiate and we will accept the the reasonable terms whatever they are you know because we want to avoid bloodshed and we want to protect uh, Islam so uh, a high level delegation so I'm a, you know probably you know he's been um, pumped up by uh, the, the the operation he's got his terms of of, of, of reference he's got his red lines uh, so um, uh, so but at this time he's a sworn enemy of uh, Islam <clears throat> you know he eventually becomes a Muslim he eventually converts but not until you know after or during Fatima Makkah, the conquest of Makkah is going to happen in, in a couple of years' time, or less than a couple of years' time. Um, but up, up until then, he, you know, he, although he he has sincere characteristics and he uses them in in his jahiliya times, in his uh, kufr times, and he channels them against the Prophet and against the Muslims, um, in sort of, uh, and we talked about you know people like him, people like Abu Sufyan. They have noble characteristics, uh, 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 you know, of the Jahili days. Um, they're not evil and vile like uh, Abu Jahl, uh, you know, or Abu Lahab. You know, these people had 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 a visceral hatred towards Islam and the Prophet These guys, they they they've been sucked in with the propaganda. They they feel that as leaders, they've got too much to lose. Uh, they, they've got too much skin in the game. And, and so for those reasons, they, they're against the Muslims, they're against the Prophet. And Sahel's own kids have become Muslim. So, you know, uh, his, his, his one son actually defected to the Muslims on the battlefield. I mean, just think of the humiliation that that must have caused, you know, uh, uh, Sahel when they're marching out for for Badr, you know, and the haughty tautiness that we've talked about, uh, and his his one son has become a Muslim, but he hasn't, you know, he, he you know um, he uh, uh, volunteers to join the army. They join the army, they go there, and then quietly he just sneaks off, gets on his horse or his camel, and goes over to the Muslim side, announces his Islam. And fights on the side of the Muslims against the Quraysh, against the people he's marched out with, and and and, is, and has helped inflict a heavy defeat on the Quraysh. And then on top of that, Sahel gets captured, and then is in, in imprisoned and has to be bailed out, you know, uh, in, for the ransom. And and, and you know, the, so you know, and and his other son wants to become a Muslim. And he's and he's been torturing Abu Jandal uh, for the last three four years in his own home. He's chained him up. They've, he's, he's told his servants to whip his own son and keep him imprisoned in, in, in shackled because he's a Muslim. And he you know they they you know they torture him. He's got torture marks on his back. We'll talk about that. And his front on the, on his chest. We'll talk about that later on. Inshallah. You know, uh, that's his own son, right? Uh, and and they're, they're forcing him to uh, worship the idols and he's not doing it. So the Quraysh know that Sahel is the right man for the job. Not only is he a senior person, not only is, a, is he a, a chieftain, not only is he a, 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 an elder, he has this uh, hatred towards uh, the Muslims and Islam uh, and... Uh, he is a master orator. He's a wordsmith, right? So from their point of view, he is the man for the job. And and, and you'll you'll see later on, inshallah, as the negotiations proceed. Yeah, he was the man uh, for uh, the job. So, um, uh, so, um, so Sahil um, and his oratory. I mean, it, it's 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 legend. There are a couple of other things. I mean, he, he you know became a Muslim. He died a shaheed uh, in, in 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 Syria when the Muslims are are, are fighting uh, the Romans. So he converts and he converts sincerely, you know. And and um, within a couple of years of converting, when the Prophet died after you know the Fatima, he converted, and then within the, even in a couple of years, uh, he stayed in Makkah, obviously. Um, he was known to be 
one of the most righteous of the Makkans who had converted. So he had he'd thrown himself in, you know, uh, to Islam, you know, uh, head first. You know, he passionately, sincerely taken up Islam and what it meant. And he was one of those who was known to uh, pray the most, give the most zakat, and have have a deep understanding of Islamic philosophy, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and adab and, and, and morals and ethics, right? Uh, and 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 it's borne out. But there's there's one occasion where um, they're waiting to see. There's a delegation waiting to see Umar, Umar ibn Khattab, who is the the Khalif, uh, and uh, Sahil. He sat with his chum, senior elder Abu Sufyan, uh, you know, um, um, and um, they sat waiting for audience with Umar ibn al Khattab. But you've got these slaves, former slaves, going ahead of them, right? You've got you know Bilal and you know uh, Masood and other other you know uh, people, uh, you know, uh, uh, visiting uh, Umar before them and, and and they're in the horse talking and so look you know uh abu sufyan he sneers at this situation and, you know bilal you know Rumi, Ibn Masood, they, these are servants and slaves right and they get to see uh umar ibn al-khattab doesn't he know we're waiting here so he, he turns to uh abu sufyan turns to say said look I've never seen a day like this before. We are here. Look at the humiliation. These guys are going in front of us, right? Uh, and and you know, uh, and then uh, you know, um, and, uh, you know, we are here. These are slaves, and they've been given precedence over us. And then Sahel quips back, right, uh, to Abu Sufyan and puts him in his place. Says, "Look, I can see anger in your face, right? But if you're going to be angry, you need to be angry with yourself." For they were called to Islam and we were called to Islam. They raced forward uh, and, uh, and we stayed behind. And the blessings that they get because of the fact that they got into Islam first are far more uh, than the honor of them entering the door of Ummah before us. Right? They came into Islam 10, 15 years before you did. You know, the fact that we have to wait a few extra minutes nothing in the scheme of things they are you know uh, they, they are you know in a different league right compared to us right you know uh, you know uh, don't 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 be jealous against them because of that criticize yourself first right and when and another beautiful thing he said is that when uh, when when uh, the Prophet died, the news reached uh, Makkah. The panic in the streets of Makkah, literally, and 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 again, this was all over the the the, the Muslim, uh, uh, the Islamic State. Uh, people didn't know how to how to take that news, and lots of people because their allegiance may have been to the individual or to the tribal leader. And, 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 and that was their mentality, those that didn't have a deep understanding of Islam. Um, and so when the head is gone, the Prophet has died, many people were thinking of uh, switching back to their old ways. They said, look, we've given pledge to the Prophet well, he's not here, so we don't need to fulfill that pledge anymore. So that was their mentality. It's not that they were firm believers in Allah. Uh, and so these rumors are spreading around Makkah. And, and, and again, we saw that in, in some of the other places where whole tribes apostatized they became non-muslim and abu Bakr siddiq as khalif his main duty uh, were, were the wars of ridda of apostasy you know he would he would fight people who had just who had just been muslims and had apostatized and you know, people now claim that they're prophets they're jumping on the bandwagon so uh so Hayal, he um, uh, he he turns the tide. He's well respected in in Mecca. He stands uh, on the the, the 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 doors of the Kaaba in front of the Kaaba. He gathers the people and he he, he gives a, 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 a um, he, uh, he he tells them off. He says, says basically, "O people of Mecca, don't be the last people to enter into Islam, and then have the dishonor 
of being the first people to uh, to leave Islam, to become renegades, to apostatize. You you know you've been blessed by having Islam, but you're one of the last people to become Muslim, and don't have the dishonor, even though you're Quraysh, you're Arabs, you're the tribe of Muslims. Maybe you have the dishonor of being the first people to leave Islam, and then because of that speech, that eloquence, you know, he was able to. Uh, to facilitate the, 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 the governor in, 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 in making sure that the people remained true to Islam. And that was, again, was a critical time. And again, this goes back to the phrase that the Prophet Sallam uttered to Umar ibn al-Khattab when Sahel was captured at Badr and Umar said she cut off his tongue. And the Prophet says, look, look, I'm the Prophet of Allah. We're not here to mutilate people. And it might be that he might say a good word that will please you one day and this might be referenced to that and again the Prophet he's, he's a positive thinker he's a positive leader he's looking for these positivities uh, 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 around these things uh, and so anyway getting back to Sahel he, he's coming Prophet is putting a positive spin on that this is good news they're sending Sahel we're going to get a deal done and he's telling that to uh, to to uh, to the people, right? Um, uh, but Sahel's been told, right? The red line is: do not let the Arabs say that they got the better of us. They're not allowed to come into Mecca at all this year. Come what come may, right? You know. Uh, and 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 as I said, I just mentioned that his son Abdul ibn uh, Sahel, you know, he converted on the Battle of Badr, and he's with the the, the Muslim uh, camp. His other son, Abu Jandal, which we'll talk about in a second, or inshallah, maybe the end of this week or, or, or next session, he's been chained uh, for the last three, uh, four or five years, okay? And he's been tortured by his father because he's a Muslim. So they, the, 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 the two groups meet and they start negotiating. Uh, and uh, so the way things uh, happen is obviously they, they'll negotiate the terms, they'll agree on the terms, and they'll, then, then they'll, write the, the, they'll write the terms, they'll write the treaty, and they'll both uh, get uh, to, 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 to sign it. So they're, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they, the brother, um, he calls Ali ibn Abi Talib to be his uh, scribe, uh, because the brother, um, Cannot write, cannot read, nor write. Um, uh, so he calls uh, Ali to be his uh, his scribe uh, for uh, for the negotiations. Uh, so then, uh, formal negotiations uh, start once they've sort of uh, outlined the, each other's positions. And so the Prophet um, he um, he he takes the lead. He becomes proactive in this situation. Uh, so he 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 starts off and it shows his confidence, right? Um, that he's calling the shots. It's, it's going to be him calling the shots. It's going to be Prophet Salam saying what what needs to be uh, 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 done. Uh, so the Prophet Salam says, "Okay, fine." Turns to Ali. Let's start uh, writing uh, the uh, terms of the agreement, the treaty. Uh, Start by writing Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You see in, in translation in the name of Allah, the Ar-Rahman, the Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, uh, the most uh, merciful. But then Sahil uh, ibn Amr, he's you know uh, again he's caught off guard. He's he's you know he's been outmaneuvered here, um, and he says, look, I don't you know I don't recognize uh, uh, what 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 this is about, right? Um, this is not uh, a phrase that we are used to. I do not accept uh, a, uh, a Rahman. You know, so look, you know, uh, you you were one of us. We know nothing about this a Rahman, and uh, insisted that we, you know, we, we don't, you know, we 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 use the phrase that we're used to, what, that we cust customarily we. The, the, the way we start our treaties. I don't want to start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I don't accept this ar-Rahman, right? Uh, so uh, write, uh, as we should write, this is a Sahel saying, uh, the ismika al-Lahumma, right? The is, 
uh, Nika uh, Allahumma in your name, O Allah. Right? Uh, and again, you can see that there, there's uh, some toing and froing uh, amongst the negotiations there. Each, each aspect of the negotiation needs to be fought over. It's a matter of pride, tribal pride. You know, uh, Sahil's got, he feels the, the weight of all the Arabs, the Quraysh and everyone else, the, you know, allied to them on his shoulders and he can't let the, his side down. The Prophet Islam, obviously, for the Muslims. So there's, there's this sort of um, uh, 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 negotiation or dance around uh, these uh, these things. So the Prophet Islam, he starts off, it's not Hamani. And then Sahel, he has to object to it just for the sake of it to try and get his say and this is this is how the negotiations work so he he wants to be one up on this so he says look i'm not accepting that condition so you know uh, uh objecting almost for the sake of it he said look right uh, i'm finding an excuse i don't recognize it oh, man you know we need to do it like we're used to you need to say the ismika allahumma so um, and again, the process, um, you know, he's got this in the back of his mind. He's always he's already announced it by Allah. No condition will the Quraysh ask of me that uh, respects the sign of Allah, except that I will give in to that condition. I'm going to avoid bloodshed. Uh, you know, uh, this we're in the Haram, uh, we're in Ihram, is in the sacred months. You know, I've, I've got to agree. To these things, and, and and this has been imposed by Allah on the Prophet Sallam. This is wahi. This is uh, a revelation. This is not his own his, his own interpretation. This is not his own ijtihad. This is not his own sense of political maneuvering. He has been told he has to do this, uh, and so uh, uh, and so um, you know he he asks. Uh, uh, to 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 rewrite that, so the Prophet uh, 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 said, "Okay, then um, uh, uh, this is what." And then the Prophet um, giving the next part of the treaty, right? So he's, he's conceded on this in the Rahim. This is what Muhammad Rasulullah has agreed with Sahail ibn Amr, right? Um, and then uh, Ali's writing the words of Rasulullah. But then when the, when Sahel hears this, he freaks out. Again, he has to object to anything the Prophet says, right? He goes, as for you being Rasulullah, wallahi, if we believed this, right, we would, we would never prevent you from the Kaaba, nor would we have fought you. Rather, write the way... Uh, write it the way your people knew you, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, right? And uh, again, he's just being uh, uh, difficult for the sake of being difficult, right? He, and, you know, and from his point of view, his enmity towards the Muslims and, and the Prophet so thought, I don't accept this Rasul. I don't accept you being the messenger of Allah. If I did, what's all this about? You know, if we accepted you, and he he, he recognized this is. This is a state-sanctioned agreement, and if he, you know, on paper, as 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 the state negotiator, accepts that he is Rasulullah, then it implies that you know that his Arab people have to accept that he is Rasulullah, and he can't sign on the dotted line for that, right? So because I'm not not going to accept that, rather you write down. Your how we refer to you and how you commonly known your your people might know you as Rasulullah. I don't recognize you as Rasulullah. I recognize you as Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Write that down. So Ali he turns to Prophet Sallam. He's writing this down. He's written, written Rasulullah, and 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 uh, he goes, you know. Uh, uh, um, so the Prophet, you know, and, and, and sort of, you know, he, he's frozen, he doesn't know what to do. So the Prophet says, Wallahi, I am Rasulullah, even if you deny it, right? And then he instructs Ali to write down Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And then Ali, he's just sort of like, my gosh, I will not delete Rasulullah. 
So Ali's, you know, he's he's getting angry. He's seen that the Prophet conceded the first you know, thing about Bismarck. Now, add insult to injury. And again, this is a public negotiation. Everyone is around them. The delegates from the eight, the, the senior ranking delegates from the Muslims, they're all part to this negotiation. Uh, there are witnesses to this negotiation going on. And Ali's um, uh, writes Rasulullah, and he's been told to put Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And, and, and he goes, I, I, I can't. I, I, I don't have it in me to rub out Rasulullah. So, you know, the version, you know, we, 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 we all know the process. This is where does it say Rasulullah, right? And then Ali showed him where, because the Prophet can't read or write, and Allah showed him where it said Rasulullah, and the Prophet personally then scrubbed out Rasulullah. So here you have Ali ibn Abi Talib disobeying the Prophet But through this <coughs> disobedience, he is actually um, honoring the process of erasing his status through this disobedience so it's 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 fairly i won't say perverse but it's it's a unique situation where by not listening to the process salam that he's ordering him to rub it out he he is is showing how much he loves the process salam right uh, <coughs> and 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 you know um uh, and so Prophet he, he, he rubs he rubs it out and again Prophet doing this you know uh, this sense of, of, of you know uh, putting himself down demeaning himself by his own hands right and again this shows the the, um, the iman of the Prophet and the fact that he is commanded to do this right <coughs> so uh, and so then the process of again taking the initiative on the next line. Okay, excuse me. So, um, well, uh, you know, uh, so this might mean, so this change that. Uh, uh, Rasulullah, he changed that. And go to the next part of the agreement that the Quraysh will let the Muslims do Umrah. The process knows he's not, they're not going to let him do Umrah, right? Um, and and uh, but he's stipulating his terms, and again, he's showing his uh, his confident posture, right? And he he's taking charge. Okay, so write this down. The the Quraysh will let the Muslims do Umrah, right? Um, and then Sahel, you know, um, he jumps in, right? And, and and he knows that this is the red line. He goes, as for this year, no, we cannot do this. Rather, and he has to think on the spot it will be for next year or it may, it may be that he, he was given this wiggle room by by the others right you, you cannot allow it to happen this year okay so he jumps in straight away as for this year no we cannot do this rather you will come back uh, next year this is the the, the the red line this is there's no compromise on this uh, but again so hell knows this is what the prophet wanted to do to do umrah right so this is the, the crux of the matter, right? So you can do it, but it can't happen this year, right? And, and then, the, so the process has to agree to that because he's already said that, fine, right? Uh, and, and so all the, the Muslims, they, they feel defeated and dejected because, they, because it's written down now, they cannot do Ummah this year, right? And then Sahel takes charge because that was the whole point. That was the whole point of all of them coming, dressing in ihram, making the intention, bringing the animals, camping outside, dodging the armies, having the negotiation. They're going to do Umrah. They've been promised Umrah. And then they've been stopped from doing Umrah. So they're all shell shocked. And Prophet Sassam, he's sort of, right, uh, he knows he has to accept that condition. And then Sahel. You know, uh, knowing that he's got the upper hand now, uh, then he starts uh, putting extra conditions um, in a way just to turn the knife even more to 
to humiliate the Muslims even more. So he's sort of now he's feeling buoyed up and, and cocky and confident. And then he goes, right, fine. Not a single man from us, right, from the Quraysh, from Makkah, um, who leaves our religion, re uh, reneges on our religion, becomes a renegade and defects over to you, even if he's of your religion, being a Muslim, right, except that you hand him back to us. So now you can see he's getting, you know, uh, uh, he's getting uppity, right? So, and, and this has been a really um, uh, big sore for the Quraysh that, you know, their, their youngsters, their best, are secretly leaving Makkah and emigrating to Medina. So, okay, right, we need to put a stop to this, okay? Any one of us comes to Medina, even if he's one of your one of your own religion, you need to hand him back to us, right? Um, and again, we've said Sahel's own son was one of these people that did this, the Battle of Badr. His other son, Abu Jando, he once he is a Muslim, he's been desperate to leave, but he's in chains and he can't leave. You know, what ha you know, um, uh, and so he, this is something that's personal to him. If any one of us comes over to you, you've got to hand him back, right? Um, and then the Muslims around, they're, 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 there's an outcry. And there's a palpable, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, aghast in the community of the Muslims because many of them, this is what they've done. They've left Makkah and emigrated to uh, Medina. And you can hear them, you can hear the Muslims say, Subhanallah, what an unfair condition. How can we return any Muslims back to you? You know, and and then Ali, he said, I'm not writing this down. Right, so there's, 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 there's real tension in the air and people and the Muslims are saying, how can we agree to this? And the process, and he's just there, he's just, biting his tongue essentially, right? He knows this is a one-sided, or this is an unfair condition, right? This really stabs at the heart of uh, the Muslims deliberately, right? This is this is malicious, right? So not a single man from us uh, uh, who, who reneges and defects to you, even, even if he's one of your religion, you've got to hand him back, right? Um, and, uh, and then, as these negotiations are happening, again, this 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 is again it's the color of Allah. This is 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 uh, how Allah wanted to reinforce this particular part of the negotiation. Uh, and again, you know, you couldn't you, you couldn't you couldn't write this down if you were writing a, a piece of fiction. This this would be almost too incredible, too melodramatic, right? that at this critical point in time they're negotiating and it's you know Sahel who comes with this 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 turn. In the meantime, if you wind back a few hours, Abu Janda, the son of Sahel uh, bin Amr, he's been put in chains, he's been tortured, um, and he's been imprisoned in his own home by his own father. He hears the Muslims' account in Hudaybiyah, which is less than, you know, just a few hours away, right? He now knows this is his chance. And, you know, he's been plotting his escape for the last four to five years, but he's not been able to escape because even if he escapes, he's in chains. Where's he going to go? How's he going to ride out? How's he going to escape? Um, people recognize him. People, all, you know, will he'll, he'll, he'll drag him back, you know. But uh, amongst all this tension, you know, the, the, the Quraysh, and, and their their tension is diverted. They're in their, you know, they're they're in their panic stations. They're they're you know preparing for war or wanting a positive outcome from negotiations. So with Jandal, he slips out, you know, chains goes down probably a, a, a different route, and he stumbles onto the plain of Hudaybiyah. <coughs> right? He's not on a camel. He's not on a horse. You know, he he escapes and he finds and he, he's. You know, everyone else has escaped to Medina, and he thinks this is his own. This is his chance, and he goes there 
and he's crying out and, and imagine his joy at seeing the Muslims. He's in chains and he sees the Muslims and he knows he's safe now. So he cries out, Ya Muslimin, I have found you. Yes, yes, yes. Right? So he's shouting this out in the distance. He's seen the Muslims and he's shouting, Oh, Muslims, I found you. And they know who he is, right? Um, but at that very point in time, Sahel and Prophet they are negotiating that one point, right? Sahel sees his own son and he's in rage, right? This is humiliation upon humiliation, right? So then he turns to the Prophet and says, you know, again with his arrogance and his anger and seething in his eyes, this is the first one that that condition will be applied upon. Right? So they haven't even written this down. They haven't even agreed to it. Right? Um, and then the, the, there's uproar amongst the Muslims. SubhanAllah, how can we return one of ours to the mushrikun when he has chosen us as his protection he's coming to be you know you know he's coming to his brothers his brethren for and he's seeking our protection he's in chains how can we return him to you right uh, and, and and this is a, a this is a moral um, issue for the muslims somebody is seeking your protection and you help one of your own you can't return him to the pagans to be tortured right when, how can we return him, right? And but Sahel says, okay, again the the, the 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 sense of drama here. Sahel is saying this condition needs to be applied now. You know, right? you know, you you need to prove your sincerity. You need to hand him back, right? This is the first one that this condition applies upon. And Prophet says, well. And again, the Prophet's heart goes out of Jandal, and he knows this, and, and he is a human being, obviously. And he's under instruction by Allah to accept all agreements, but it's not been written down, so he's looking for wiggle room. So the Prophet says, look, we haven't even written it down yet. We're still discussing it. So he's he's trying to you know uh, find uh, some wiggle room. So look, it's not been agreed. We've not written it down, right? So, you know, you, you can't enforce it because we're, I haven't agreed to that. You know, we're, you know, we're still negotiating. This is still, this is still part of the negotiation. It's not been written down, and so Hale, you know, it's his own son. And he has to, you know, uh, dig in, right? He's seen the process and capitulate on point after point. So, right, if you don't agree to this, the treaty will be over, right? Um, you know, so you can't, you know, if you refuse this, that's it, end of, I'm ripping everything up, I'm going back and we'll, we'll prepare for war. So, so the process says, look, we haven't even agreed on this. Okay, fine. Why don't you, as a sign of goodwill, gift him to me and then we'll start the condition on anyone that comes after that. Just, just one gift, right? And in the books of Sira says, the Prophet pleaded many times on this one point and he's you know uh, short of begging Sahel to say look just give me him just give me Abu Jandal this is goodwill gesture just hand him over we'll start after this just you know just just make this one exception we'll write it down it'll, we'll enforce it after this but please look at him give me him as as a as a gift and Sahel Digs his 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 uh, uh, digs his heels and says, "Look, no, it's this condition, or nothing. The treaty will be over if you don't give me this, right? We haven't written it down. You no, know, nope, this is it, right? Um, this and you say know, so this is the condition. You take it or you leave it, and there is a, a even amongst these the, this um, tense negotiations, you know." You, you have this on pass again. So, uh, so amongst the, 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 the Quraysh delegation, 
um, you, uh, you know, uh, Mikras, who talked about who's the, the one who was first sent to stall, you know, uh, he then comes up with an idea. He goes, okay, fine. What if we guarantee his safety that he won't be tortured, right? So he's trying to break the deadlock, deadlock that, you know, uh, the process of begging, sort of begging Sahel to hand over Abu Jandal, you know. The Muslims are all, you know, uh, furious in this condition and they want Abu Jandal. Everyone knows about him, right? Um, and, uh, and Sahel, because it's his own son, he's not budging. So Mikras says, okay, fine. How about we guarantee his safety? He won't be tortured, right? How about that? So uh, Abu Jandal, he's he's walking in there, he's seeing this, and then and then he arrives there, and he's seeing seeing them argue, right? Uh, and then uh, the processor has to reluctantly agree to that condition that Abu Jandal has to be handed back. And then Abu Jandal, he's he's freaking out. Right, and he's crying out. I mean, he's been he's been tortured, imprisoned, you know, and and his chest uh, is testament to the torture because he's got the torture marks all over his chest. So he's you know he's looking around to all the other Muslims there and says, "Oh Muslims, oh Muslims, and he's in chains. Oh Muslims, will you return me to the pagans while I come to you as a Muslim?" And he's shouting out and he's you know uh, freaking you know uh, out at all of this, right? You know. Um, and he's been dreaming of safety. He's, you know, how am I going to get to the Muslims? How am I going to get to Medina? And then Medina comes to him, essentially. The Muslims are coming to him. And he, you know, he, 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 he escapes and he's there. He's within the camp of the Muslims. And he's begging for his own life. Can't you see what they've done to me? Right? You're going to return me to these people. Right? And, and the Prophet ﷺ, what can he say? He can only console Abu Jandal because this is the terms of the agreement. And he goes, Abu Jandal, be patient for Allah will make uh, an exit for you. He'll make a way out for you, right? And and just think of how hard this is for the Prophet This is And yet this is the only consolation. This is a consolation for him. Dari, uh, Allah will make a way out for you. And this and, and the Muslims, they, they, they just... This is completely unacceptable. So then, you know, uh, and then so Umar ibn al-Khattab, he's taken up by all these emotions. He stands up and he walks over to Abu Jandal, right? Uh, and said to him, right? Uh, and, you know, you know got, got Abu Jandal aside and said, look, be patient, O uh, Abu Jandal. And, 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 you know, talking in coded ways, he says, and realize that the, their blood is not worth anything. And then he takes his sword and he's, he's uh, pointing the handle over this, of the sword to Abu Jandal, right? And he's saying basically, look, be patient. Uh, their blood is not worth anything. Their kafir is saying, their blood's not worth anything. And he goes, and he's pointing his sword over to Abu Jandal and said, look, here's the sword, use it against them. Right? And he's, point, he's, you know, uh, doing uh, Ishala, you know, gesturing over to Sahel, his father, and the grass. And said, look, he's, you know, here's the sword. Their blood is worth nothing. And he's trying to rile up um, Sahel, to, uh, sorry, Abu Jandal to do something rash, right? And, 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 and he says, look, you know, we can't do anything because... Prophet has told us, you know, we, we have to stick to the agreement, right? But you're not bound by the agreement, right? Um, you know, but if you want to get rid of them, that's your business. We're not going to get involved. Here, take my sword, right? Um, and do it of your own. But uh, Abu Jandal, he couldn't. Sahil's his father, you know, uh, and he... You know, despite everything, he just knows that he just can't do that, right? And so then Abu uh, Jandal, he's, you know, they put his chains back on or he's tied back up and uh, he's returned to Makkah, right? Uh, and according to the, uh, the, 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 the promise from Gras, 
he is not tortured thereafter. Okay, so uh, so again, you can see how dramatic the 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 the, the, the whole uh, situation uh, is. Um, and uh, we'll we'll finish there. We haven't finished the, the terms of the the uh, the agreement uh, because the the other term is that obviously if somebody leaves Medina and goes to Mecca, they don't need to be returned back. But we'll we'll talk about that later on. But this is this really dramatic, you know, twist in the tail, right? Uh, uh, you know that, that basically this really deflates and floors all of the Muslim camp, right? Uh, it, it is, you know, beyond believable, you know, uh, so melodramatic. Abu Jandal escapes, gets there, and then at the moment of his freedom has to be taken back, right? And just think of the, the, how the Muslims feel because of that. So we'll stop there, inshallah, uh, and uh, then continue next time with the rest of the negotiations. Uh, so and, uh, until next time, do remember the Ummah in your du'a, do remember us in your du'as, do stay safe, uh, wash your hands uh, with soap and water <laughs> nowadays, uh, always good public health advice. Um, and as I say, uh, 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 if you've got any questions, comments, queries, uh, email, WhatsApp, YouTube, comments, uh, uh, or, or drop me a line, inshallah. Uh, so do take care. Until next time, this is my here. ولا سرنا الإنسان الله في خص إلا الذين آمنوا وآمنوا سبحانه وتعالى وتواصلوا بالحق وتواصلوا بالصبر جزاك الله خير وبليت هيك السلام عليكم